guys, how's it going? So today's project is actually a fairly simple one, but I'm really hopeful that it's gonna be gorgeous in the end. I just went and harvested a bunch of this truffula pink gomfrina. It's so beautiful. Look at this basket full. I just kind of want to leave it right here. I planted a lot of this gomfrina up by our front entrance and it has done above and beyond what I thought it was going to do up there. They have grown absolutely massive. In fact, I probably planted a little bit too many up there, but now I know what to do in the future, like how much room to give them. But they have just been providing color all summer long. And next week, uh, it's in the forecast that we may get our first light frost. So I really wanted to get this harvested and use it in a project before that happens because gomfrina is an annual in our area. Um, so when gomfrina dries, it actually maintains its color and its shape. I harvested this about seven to 10 days ago and it's completely dry, but look at the color. It's so beautiful. I mean, it, you really, I mean, you can tell a tiny difference. It's a little bit lighter, but I think it's gonna be really perfect for like a Valentine's wreath um, or even a spring wreath, Easter, something like that. So that's what we're gonna do today is just create a truffula pink gomfrina wreath. Um, it's very easy to do. We've done a lot of wreath tutorials in the past. Um, this is really no different, except I am using a thicker frame. This is like a twig frame with some moss in it, which it doesn't matter that there's moss, um, instead of a flat wire frame. And the reason for that is, is that I'm hoping that I don't have to use quite as much gomfrina to get a really full looking wreath, as opposed to if I used a flat wire wreath, I'd have to use a lot of gomfrina to create that kind of lift, you know, in the center of the wreath. Um, the other supplies I'll use is this paddle wire and this is 22 gauge just green paddle wire right here and then I've got a couple of pair of I've got snips and then pruners so I can cut my wire um, so the first thing that you do is you attach your wire to the wreath and once you attach it you actually don't remove it at any point until the very end um, so to do that you just pick a spot on the wreath usually I work on this side because I'm right-handed I don't know if it's different for you lefties maybe you will start on the left side but just twist it on itself like that a few times. And then just make sure to pull it tight. And what we'll do is gather up little bundles. Try to be delicate. Look at these. Oh. And you can see too, like this is more of a fresh bloom right here. It's got a fresher pink color and this one's a little bit more aged. But I kind of like that. Um, difference in color it brings a little bit of depth and interest and keep in mind that the size of bundles that you start with in the beginning that's the size you kind of want to maintain throughout the course of the project otherwise you can end up with really thick spots in your wreath or thin spots so in general this is kind of like the size that i like to start with so we just lay it on the wreath form like so and then we're just going to go around two or three times we'll just do twice and see how this goes like that. And just make sure that you're pulling that wire very, very tightly because these aren't dry yet. They will desiccate a little bit. They will get a little bit smaller. Their stems will as they dry. So you want to make sure that that wire is tight. So when they do kind of dry up, they're still attached really well to the wreath form. Um, now I'm going to take my snips and if you have any excess stem here, you can cut it off kind of like that. We have an airplane going overhead. Hold on. Oh, that's a helicopter. That's close. Okay, and let's make the second bundle. I'll show you with a couple, maybe a couple more bundles, and then we will kind of speed up the process. So I can see that a couple of these blooms are maybe a little bit too aged. See that right there? They're kind of throwing off some of their petals. I think it's this one right here. So I'm gonna pull that one out and just set it aside. We won't use that. You'll wanna use as fresh of blooms as you can. For your next bundle, you're just gonna kind of lay it over the top of your last one, but either to the inside or the outside, either way really nice to work with these when they aren't dry because then you're not dealing with anything brittle and they've got some flexibility. Okay, so let's do one more bundle. So I don't know if it's just me, but right now I don't really smell these, but when you walk by them up by our front porch, they actually have kind of an off-putting smell. So I asked around to other people who grew these, nobody else has noticed it. So I don't know if it's just the spot up there or if it's because I planted so many all in one spot, but like just even this many right here, I don't smell it. It's kind of an interesting deal. Okay, so this next bundle is gonna go kind of in, laying on top again, but onto the right side. And that's kind of how we'll keep doing this entire wreath. So my next one will go in the center, we'll go inside, outside, center, inside, outside, all the way to the end. So we're just gonna go ahead and speed this part up. If you run across 
any blooms that are falling apart, just snip those off. It's no big deal. Um, we put enough in each one of these bundles that they're nice and full. All right, here we go. almost done. It's turned out so pretty thus far. I'm really excited about the way it looks and I'm really glad that I used a bigger wreath form because it gave me much more dimension and much more thickness and I do think it allowed me to use fewer flowers um, because that would have taken an enormous amount of flowers to get that thickness. Um, but it does get tricky toward the end so the wire up to this point has been one continuous piece um, and now I'm going to attach my last bundle but let me show you what it looks like over here on this side. See how I've got that little gap right there? That's my last little placement I need to do. Now at this point, you could stop. You could cut your wire, attach it to the back and just tie it all off. Um, and then this is where you could put a bow or your wreath hanger and it's pretty much masked by that kind of thing. But I want to finish this one completely. So what I do is I cut my wire, just a length of it. And then I'm not even sure how the best way is to show you this. Erin, you might have to get back around here cause I have to like, well, we'll try, here we go. So here's my little bundle. I'm going to make it a little shorter. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna tuck it. See my wire's coming here. I'm going to tuck it right in underneath. So I don't know if you can see where that is. Let's see, right there. And then my hand's totally blocking it. I'm sorry, I'm just holding it in place. I'm just gonna feed this wire around, it's pinching the stems now. And I'm gonna go through the existing gomfrina that's here, just gently, so like that. Go around to the back. I find this took some experience, like some practice to do. And I'm just gonna keep going around the wreath form a few times to where I feel like that's really nicely like pinched in there. See that, look at that, pretty perfect. And don't be afraid to get the glue gun out. I do that almost every single time I make a wreath and I'll fill in little gaps here and there and there's no shame in using a glue gun. Uh, but it is nice to know that most of it's held in by wire. Um, there we go. I hope that that was kind of clear. It's really hard sometimes to demonstrate. And then to tie it off to the back, so you check that out, see all that wire. I'm just gonna find a spot to attach it to the wreath form like that. And I'm just gonna do that several times and it'll just stay put. Wire is awesome. That looks pretty full, right? Like I'm seeing maybe this is, yeah, that's where I ended it right here. I might tuck a few little pieces in there. Let's do that. So these are my dried pieces. And I'm just gonna weave these in and they'll probably stay put without glue. Let me just be a little shorter. Yeah, just to fill in those little like gaps. So I could fuss with this wreath for a really, really long time. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just lay it flat just like it is right here. I mean, we'll go hang it so we can show you what it looks like on a door. Um, but then I'm gonna remove it and lay it flat until the flowers dry. And then I probably won't display it because it's fall, you know, going into winter and this is definitely not the right color tone uh, for decorating right now. But it's so fun that I know I'll have this kind of fresh wreath to bring out in February before Valentine's Day to decorate with. And it's fun to utilize this stuff out of your own garden as well. And I suspect that this will last, if it's on a door that's semi-protected, which I'll put this up on our front porch probably, if it's on a protected door, it'll last for probably several seasons. So you can just store it. You know what I do is I just take it off the door with my wreath hanger on it and I hang it in a closet with a garbage bag over the wreath and just tie it over the top 
right on the wreath hanger and my wreaths stay really nice for a lot of years. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing this come together. And if nothing else, add Truffula Pink Gomfrina to your planting list next year because it's gorgeous in the garden and you can do stuff like this with it, which is fun. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.